to the United Kingdom. Um, the uh, policy output over the course of the past decade has largely reflected these pronouncements and that, that shared alignment and interest positions between organized business and the government. Uh, in December 2001, the Highly Skilled Migrants Program first introduced an explicit points system, which was ostensibly based on the Australian model, taking into consideration formal level of education, work experience, salary level, overall qualification, and the qualification of the spouse, and then there were added points for uh, newcomers in shortage sectors of the economy, especially medicine. Um, there was also the um, conception that the eastward enlargement of the European Union in 2004 would help open up a fresh labor pool of largely low-skilled immigrants from Central and Eastern Europe. And indeed, um, while streamlining and fine-tuning the um, points being the labor migration system, um, applications for the bottom tiers were uh, first phased out and then closed down altogether with the expectation that the Central and East European newcomers would feed into these sectors. Um, and this, of course, proved a relatively successful strategy given that between 2004 and 2006 alone, 580,000 EU aid citizens registered with the Department of Works and Pensions. And there was further fiddling uh, towards the end of the decade in 2008. Uh, two tiers replaced the old HSMP, not so old really. 2001, as I said, but its logic fundamentally and in um, bigger picture terms remains ultimately the same. In many ways, that can be already deduced from the proposal's title, a points-based system making migration work for Britain, with the uh, fairly lame pun obviously intending that uh, migration is meant to benefit the country and uh, only such migration really ought to be considered seriously. Uh, we find on 12 occasions within that policy document reference to the fact that employers will be consulted and or that the scheme is employer-led. Um, there is also a fairly significant involvement of organized business with regards to uh, setting forth these categories and devising them. The CBI is invited to the biannual so-called user panel planning sessions of the Immigration and Nationality Directorate in the Home Office. Um, its representatives are also part of the Employer Task Force Group, which is responsible for providing policy suggestions to the Home Office Border and Immigration Agency. And um, that group, in turn, has uh, influenced the uh, reform to the points-based system in 2008, which I alluded to earlier. It has also spawned a, an illegal working stakeholder group, which presumably tackles uh, undocumented forms of labor migration. Um, it must also be said that uh, a number of major corporations play a particularly pronounced role in um, consulting with and advising government. Uh, and in particular, uh, in that task force group, which I mentioned, which uh, acts as a very important agenda center and source of ideas for British immigration policy. Uh, we find businesses such as Shell, Ernst & Young, Tesco, Citigroup, and Goldman Sachs, as well as the sectoral employer associations in engineering, hospitality, and employment services. So in other words, the um, policy networks within which uh, migration policy are, uh, is devised very much favor a fairly prominent position of the employer association and consequently business interests and um, business considerations fairly uh, early on in the day shape and color the legislative um, agenda. Now why is all this relevant towards the role of uh, students and what of students within this a diversified and stratified a new form of migration regulation. Well, in many ways, students fall between the fault lines because on one level, they can become uh, bogus migrants, that is to say they uh, can be portrayed as attending uh, illegitimate uh, colleges. On the other hand, they too, of course, can eventually, upon graduation, become a valuable human resource. 
uh, that can be slotted into the production process and they can become useful labor migrants of the next generation. So uh, in many ways, um, what we seem to be witnessing uh, is very much informed by this two-pronged logic. On one level, there's a crackdown on fake colleges, especially English language institutes. There's a great deal of anecdotal evidence of the use of student visas for undocumented labor migration, which, um, interestingly, was tolerated um, up until the end of the economic boom in 2007, but obviously is uh, currently no longer deemed desirable. There are early and easy points to be scored uh, with the yellow press by cracking down on these sorts um, of institutions. On another level, uh, foreign students are um, courted because uh, they may well constitute the next generation of skilled migrants that the country is currently uh, continues uh, to recruit. After all, they're socialized and educated in the UK uh, and uh, in many ways they would thus uh, feed in very well with the existing system. Now, um, this point-based system then seems to be an attempt to apply greater control and disciplining on them to ensure that whilst some of them might be ultimately welcome under this neoliberal competition state logic, the selection here focuses on the best, and if I may polemically suggest so, perhaps also the most obedient brains, that's to say um, skilled labor migrants, but those that from a very early age on have been uh, told and taught to um, remain quiet and silent. What about um, a possible change in policy under the uh, current uh, Lib Dem Con? In many ways, it seems to me that despite the announcement of a temporary cap on non-EU migration, a fundamental U-turn in policymaking seems fairly unlikely without significant pressure from below. That is to say that we've already had uh, first misgivings over the economic fallout of significantly reducing skilled non-EU migration put forward, of course, by, by Vince Cable. Um, finally, and I realize I'm probably taxing our patience a little bit, uh, let me just, um, perhaps as a negative model, uh, draw briefly on some of the experiences um, in uh, my home country, the United States, uh, which in many ways might serve as um, a fr frightening model of where things could be headed. Um, since the 11th of September 2001, foreign students have um, also been rediscovered, uh, not just as a cash cow, but as a potential security threat. The newly formed Homeland Security keeps a central register of foreign students, including at the secondary school level. Any absence of any foreign student in the United States is communicated immediately to Homeland Security in Washington, D.C. On the second absence, Homeland Security dispatches field offices to verify that students have not absconded. So there's an enormous amount of system, uh, sorry, an enormous amount of control and surveillance in place to ensure um, that uh, even high school students uh, do not use student visas to uh, work in an undocumented fashion, or indeed to try to change migration categories, if you will. Uh, this is in many ways a negative model, and it is something that, that might lie ahead of uh, this sort of process as a final word of warning. Okay, well, um, I would have plenty of other things to say, but in the interest of solidarity with my other presenters here, I think I'll uh, leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you very much.